Kids at noon, the mother of the Richneck Elementary School shooter pleads guilty to felony child neglect. Deja Taylor reportedly told investigators she left her handgun on top of her dresser on January 6 before her son took it to the school and shot his teacher, Abby Zwarner. Ann Sparacco has been following this case from the very beginning, and she joins us live now outside the courthouse. And Taylor actually faced another charge in this case. What happened with that one? Well, Bethany Deja Taylor also faced a charge of le recklessly leaving a loaded handgun in reach of her child. Now, today in court, prosecutors say they agreed to null process that charge, which means they essentially are setting it aside and not prosecuting Taylor on that charge at this time. Meanwhile, Deja Taylor did plead guilty to felony child neglect, which holds a maximum penalty of five years in prison. However, prosecutors agreed with Taylor's attorney to ask for a sentence within the state guidelines of up to six months, but the judge says he can go above that recommendation if he chooses. Despite Taylor's argument that she kept the gun secured, prosecutors told the judge today that Taylor told investigators she usually kept her gun on top of her dresser at home with a trigger lock on the gun. Prosecutors also said officers did not find a trigger lock, lock box, or key to the box inside her home when they conducted a search warrant after the shooting. Here's what Taylor's attorney, James Ellenson, had to say about what he hopes for in the upcoming sentencing. I still think that no jail time would be appropriate. I think, um, again, given the mitigating factors that will present at sentencing, I mean, basically this was the Commonwealth's case. We haven't put on our evidence about what is the mitigation, and that will be presented at uh, sentencing. And Abby Zwerner's attorney sent us a statement in response to this latest guilty plea saying in part, quote, as the criminal probe widens, our focus remains on justice for Abby and holding the school system accountable. Tonight on 13 News Now at 4, we learn more about what prosecutors say the boy told detectives the night of the shooting and how he said he got a hold of his mother's handgun. Live in Newport News, I'm Ann Sparacco for 13 News Now. And thank you. Now, Deja Taylor also did plead guilty to federal charges of lying on her gun permit paperwork that she used marijuana at the time of her purchase. She faces approximately 18 months to two years in prison on those charges. How are you doing? This is Nathaniel Swope, the Swope Center. Today, I want to talk about Deja Taylor. Uh, she's the mom of a six-year-old who shot uh, her son's teacher. She was recently sentenced to two years in prison. I'm going to read your article from ABC News. Mom of six-year-old who shot his teacher sentenced to two years in prison in a state case. Deja Taylor had pleaded guilty to felony child neglect. The mom of six-year-old who shot the teacher sentenced to 21 months in federal case. Deja Taylor was charged with using marijuana while possessing a firearm and making a false statement about her drug use during the purchase of a firearm. The Virginia mama, mother of a six-year-old boy accused of shooting his first grade teacher in a class earlier this year was sentenced on Friday to two years in prison for child neglect. Deja Taylor pleaded guilty in August, in August to state felony child neglect in connection with the January shooting of Rich Neck Elementary School in Newport News, Virginia. A misdemeanor charge of endangering a child by reckless storage of a firearm was dropped. This is Taylor's second prison sentence in connection with the shooting. In November, she was sentenced to 21 months in prison after pleading gu guilty to federal charges of using marijuana while in possession of a firearm and making a false statement about her drug use during the purchase of a firearm. Both felonies. Police say the six-year-old student brought a gun into his classroom and, and intentionally shot and wounded his teacher. Abby Zerner on January 6th sustained a gunshot wound through her hand and into her chest. Federal prosecutors said the firearm used in the shooting was purchased by Taylor in July 2002. ATF agents never found a lockbox, a trigger lock, or a key for the gun, prosecutors said. Days of Taylor faced up to five years behind bars on a child neglect charge. Prosecutors had recommended a six-month sentence which fell within state guidelines. The judge ultimately sentenced Taylor to five years with three years suspended. She will also serve two years of probation when she is released which must include substance abuse treatment, parenting classes, and mental health treatment, prosecutors said. The state sentence will be served consecutive to the federal 21-month sentence she is currently serving. The Newport News Commonwealth Attorney Officer said 
Uh, Taylor's attorney, James, James Ellison, told ABC News the sentence was excessive and harsh. Ellison said he believed the judge felt Taylor had shown no remorse and didn't take into account uh, mitigating factors uh, the defense had argued in court. I was arguing domestic abuse, substance abuse, and mental health. Those who were sort of the key issues that I thought were mitigating factors, Ellison said. And also there were instances of maybe the system failing her. Ellison had previously told reporters he believed no jail time would be appropriate for child neglect charge. Uh, Diane Toscano, Zerner's lawyer, released a statement Friday following the sentence. There were multiple failures and accountability that led to Abby being shot and almost killed while teaching class. And our focus remains fixed on the school's district inaction and failure to protect teachers and students. Uh, Toscano told ABC News in a statement, Zerner testified during the federal sentencing hearing on the last lasting impact of shooting. Not only do I bear physical scars from the shooting and will remain with me forever, I contend daily with deep psychological scars that plague me during the most waking moments and invade my dreams, she said. She said she has undergone five surgeries and regular intensive physical therapy to restore motion in her hand. The permanent damage should never have been allowed to happen to me and would not have happened if not the defendant's action and, lo and lack thereof, she said. Zerner filed a $40 million lawsuit against her school district, accusing them of negligence. The school board's lawyers sought to dismiss her claim, arguing her injuries are covered under state's workers' compensation law and judge ruled last month that the lawsuit can proceed. Uh, so I hope that the young teacher does win the lawsuit against the uh, uh, district. And I apologize for making a wrong statement earlier, saying that the mom shot the teacher, but it was actually the student who shot his teacher who brought the gun. Now, I am a school teacher as well, uh, formerly in uh, Chicago Public Schools. And um, we had a student who uh, was, a, you know, we was a, spare st a, a special student, but it, didn't, it really didn't matter. Uh, his parents left a gun out. He was playing with the gun and um, he ended up shooting himself in the face and killing himself. Uh, parents have to do a better job if you have gun around uh, your kids. Do not show them where the gun is and keep it in a lockbox. Do not keep it open. Do not uh, carry the gun and just, you know, smoke, fall asleep and leave it in your, in your pocket, in your belt. Because kids will try to play with the gun and try to use the gun and, and play with it like a toy gun. And I've heard it so many times. Uh, even with a former student of mine, Malcolm Whitney, uh, his brother said that he was playing with a gun with his brother and he mistakenly uh, shot him in the head and uh, M Malcolm Whitney is not with us anymore. Uh, I know sometimes you have older kids or older sons and you want to just tell them, uh, you know, this is where the gun is just in case somebody come in. And, and But the law is you got to have it in a lockbox and kids will play with guns. They just don't know gun safety. A lot of these triggers are like hair triggers. They just go off immediately. So the best thing to do is to hide the guns. Or what a lot of people don't do, um, you know, people can buy guns with the, with the, you know, plastic bullets or the sandbag bullets. Um, you can buy the fake guns from Amazon. You don't have to keep a real gun out in the open uh, for the kids to see and for the kids to hurt themselves. This is, like I said, this is very unfortunate. What the teacher has to has gone through. I went. I worked at a school district where students wanted to fight me. Now, if those students that had a gun, they may have shot me. You know, what I'm saying I've had. I've been in situations where students have threatened to get their father to fight me, or get their older brother or uncle to fight me. And this may be a similar situation. You know, what if they had a gun? This would have probably been a similar situation where they would have gotten a gun and shot me if they had easy access. And now kids these days, especially when they're in gangs, they have. They're stealing guns from, you know, where the Walgreens I used to work at, they're stealing guns from security guards. You know, they're, they're, they're buying guns off the street with their, the money that they make off the street. And they're killing each other, younger and younger, 13, 12, 14, and they're just killing each other, younger and younger. So we have to do a better job of not keeping guns around our kids. Um, and uh, we just, we need, even if you change the gun laws in general as parents, we need to do a better job of not keeping these guns around our kids, keeping them locked up and keeping them hidden uh, safely from the kids. And, you know, as kids grow, we need to teach kids gun safety. We need to teach kids how to use a gun, how to load a gun, knowing that uh, there's always a bullet possibly in the chamber. Never face the gun to yourself. Uh, how to point the gun without putting your finger on the trigger. 
Now, we need to teach our kids these things. A lot of times, we, their kids really don't know. They know only what they see on TV. And immediately, when they grab a gun, they point it at somebody, and they got their hand on the trigger because that's what they see on TV. You know, so we, we need better gun safety around the house, and we need better gun intelligence. We need to teach our kids how to properly use a gun. Take your kids to the gun range. Take your kids hunting. Even, even if you ain't never been hunting, take your kids hunting, using a 9 millimeter, using a rifle, small shotgun. Take them to the gun range. Teach them how to properly use a gun, how to properly use gun safety. Um, again, sorry for what the teacher has went through. Sorry that, the, you know, with the mom getting sentenced and what the young man's probably going through for actually shooting someone. Um, again, this is Nathaniel Swopes with Swopes Set of signing out. And you all have a good one.